One thing I admire so deeply about you is how technically current you still. I think you must spend a lot of time uh, reading or, or whatever, but you're always so incredibly thoughtful and, and well-read in every single detail of what's, what's going on in the industry, how to stay so on top of things while running one of the world's largest companies. Wow. Um, uh, let's see, what's the answer to that? Uh, well, first, I'm surrounded by amazing people. Um, when I went to visit you, you were surrounded by amazing people. Yeah. And, um, I, and they're generous to, to, uh, to um, uh, teach me. And so you, you have to make the effort to learn. Yeah. You know, people are, people are, um, uh, love teaching people who, who are great students. Yeah. And, um, uh, and so I dedicate myself a lot to, to being a good student. Yeah. And, you know, of course, uh, we're in, in, in a whole lot of domains from, you know, self-driving cars to uh, climate research to yeah. digital biology. Yeah. And so the, the vastness, the breadth of, of um, uh, uh, impact that we can have in the world is great. Um, but but um, uh, we also have to we have to learn to yeah. be able to, you know, and so uh, you're in a tech, you're in a tech, very tech driven industry, uh, solving, solving and creating solutions for companies. Yeah. Uh, I'm in a very tech in driven industry. And so for both of us, it's essential we understand the underpinnings of the technology. So you have an intuition. Yeah for how the industry is going to change. Yeah. You have an intuition for how, um, which one of the technologies um, is a bit of a, a little bit of a, you know, a left turn and yeah. which one is fundamental. Yeah. Uh, to realize that, that um, uh, maybe the early works that we did with generative adversarial models yeah. um, to uh, variational autoencoders um, uh, to diffusion models, that they were somewhat cousins of each other. Yeah. And, um, and that realizing the impact of one could lead to a breakthrough in another, which opens up the horizon for now diffusion models that are, that are utterly incredible. Yeah. And, and so I think having an intuition for technology allows you to better extrapolate. Yeah. And, and, and our ability to extrapolate and see down the road is really vital because, because gosh, you know, technology is changing fast, yeah. but it still takes us several years to build a great solution. And so how do you, how do you on the one hand, um, uh, uh, dedicate yourself to build something that's going to take years to do, yeah. building it on top of technology that's utterly changing, you know, by a factor of a thousand every few years. Yeah. Um, how do you do that unless you have an intuition for it? Yeah. And so I think that the fact that you're, you're so deeply gifted in technology and so you understand and you have great interest and in, in curiosity in technology, uh, is essential to running a technology-driven company. And yeah. So, so I, I I think it's it's uh, I I love that part of my job, and yeah. I'm surrounded by people who are who are uh, uh, generous to teach me, and and uh, I just I've got to just dedicate myself to be a good student. So so one one area I'm very intrigued by is, as well is is how you run the run the company. I've understood you don't have one on ones. You know, can you talk me through? Um, some of the sort of classic management playbook that, that you've challenged and, and evolved? Mm -hmm. Well, first, of, uh, with respect to building a company, the, the first thing that you have to go, uh, as with all problems, and Joel, you do this uh, very naturally, you start from first principles. Yeah. What is, what is this, this, this machine that we're trying to create? Um, and what is, what is its output? Yeah. What is its input? What is its output? Um, what are the conditions that it's in? Um, what, what, the, what is the industry like? Yeah. Is it a fast moving industry? Is it a bureaucratic industry? Um, is it highly regulated industry? Uh, you know, what, what kind of industry is it? And what are you trying to, what are you trying to build? And so uh, I think you, you think about it from that perspective. There are several things that I wanted to do with the company. I wanted yeah. to create something, uh, a company that naturally attracts amazing people. Yeah. And the reason for that is because we're, we're, we're solving problems. Our company's mission is to solve um, computing problems that are barely possible. And uh, if a problem could be solved by normal computers, we don't do it. Yeah. And so we, we have to go find problems that are that are uh, impossible for normal computers to solve or barely possible. Yeah. And, and so you, you want to attract amazing people who want to invent this new form of computing and apply it to solving some really difficult problems. Yeah. And so I, I want amazing people. Second, um, 
I, I wanted a company that was smaller, not larger. Yeah. It, you, you want a company that's as small as possible, not as large as possible. Yeah. You know, it's a, it needs to be as large as necessary to do the job well, um, but to be as small as possible. And so naturally you want to empower people. Yeah. Well, if you want, if you want an organization that uh, obeys command and control, uh, then you, you make it a pyramid, um, just like, just like the old mil military, yeah. all the way back to the Roman empire. And, um, uh, but if you want to empower people, then you want to make it as, as uh, flat as possible so yeah. that information travels quickly. And, um, uh, and so I, uh, in order to make something as flat as possible, the first layer has to be well considered. Well, the first layer is, uh, happens to be the most senior, senior people. Yeah. And you would think that they need the least amount of management. Yeah. Uh, nobody's coming to me. None of my management team is coming to me for, you know, career advice. Yeah. You know, they, they made it and they're doing great. Yeah. And so, so um, uh, I have a whole lot of people reporting to me because I don't need to do one-on-ones. I don't have to do career coaching. I don't yeah. have to, you know, they're all fabulously happy and they know what they're doing. They're experts in their field. Um, and so, so there, those one-on-ones are, are really not necessary. And, and if, if there's a, a strategic direction, um, why do you tell one person? Yeah. You tell everybody. And so um, after we're swimming in the soup of, of strategizing and how to formulate um, uh, the, the path to the future, um, I, you know, when the time comes, I just, you know, I send it out to everybody at the same time or I'll tell everybody at the same time. And people will give me feedback and we'll refine it. Yeah. And because the company is, is so flat and you've empowered the, the organization so much with, with uh, uh, knowledge of the company and, um, and their, their access to information, uh, the company is also agile. And so it turns out, it turns out that, that um, uh, by having a lot of direct reports, not having one-on-ones, uh, made the company flat, uh, information travels quickly, employees empowered, which made it possible for me not to do one-on-ones. That algorithm was well-conceived yeah. and um, the architecture is well-implemented. Uh, we also don't have business units. We don't have divisions. Yeah. Um, everybody, everybody works as one. Yeah. And um, the, com the company is shaped uh, in a way that allows us to build accelerated computing best. You know, if you asked me to go do fried chicken, we, we'd have a hard time doing fried chicken. <laughs> uh, Swedish meatballs, no chance. <laughs> but accelerated computing, very well. Um, that's I think you have 40 direct reports, right? Or, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the challenge is, is getting everybody together. Yeah. You know, I, I, when I, I want to get everybody together, but either somebody's out or somebody's on vacation or somebody's, somebody's doing something. Exactly. Yeah, the odds of everybody sitting at the office is approximately 0%. How did your leadership style change uh, over time? You've been going on for, for decades now. How did that evolve as you learned? Well, um, I don't really have a style. It's just it's just me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, there are a lot of things that 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 I, I want to do better. Yeah. And um, I, you know, if if something's happening at work and I don't like like its direction, I'll just say it. There because I don't take anybody aside. Yeah. Um, do you know, one on one coaching? Yeah. Uh, if something's not right, I'll just say it. Yeah. Um, if I have a different opinion, I just say it. Um, uh, and so. So it could be a little too direct, um, uh, but if people just realize that, that I'm not, not trying to do anything except be direct, um, and then I, I spend a lot of time reasoning through my decisions, which, which um, uh, empowers employees because they learn how, how leaders think through problems. Yeah. And um, uh, just by every meeting I'm in, um, I'm explaining how do I think through this? Yeah. Uh, let me reason through this. Yeah. Uh, let me explain why that, yeah. you know, why and, and how do we how do we compare and contrast these ideas? Um, that process of management, I think, is is really empowering. And um, uh, we also we also don't don't do just vice president meetings or yeah. just director and both meet. You know, the meetings I have, there's co new college grads in there. There are people from every different organization. And That's we're just so sitting. In, yeah, we're just yeah. all sitting in there. Yeah. They're kind of like your office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that, everybody's that, just kind of sitting in there. Exactly. Like, that's actually one thing that I found very intriguing because that's one of the playbooks, right? You have like a very clear leadership team and you have leadership team meetings and so on. And that's something I've always struggled with because you'll have a lot of the like best individual contributors. And of course, like they should be in that meeting. It shouldn't be just like vice presidents, you know, not knowing that the, the craft. Uh, so it's fascinating that that's you can. A, that's exactly, that's exactly, you got it. 
you yeah. want the person who is most informed or yeah. best skilled or just had the most experience. Yeah. They actually um, made the mess yeah. or they actually confronted the situation. You want you want ground truth. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want you want ground truth and experts the best you can. And you have some model for folks to communicate their top priorities. Mm. I've heard something about sending an email. Uh, wh what's that all about? We we have um, uh, we don't do status reports. Yeah. And so I don't read any status reports. And um, uh, the reason why I don't is because status reports are are you know they're meta information by the time you get it, you know. And so they're 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 barely um, informative. Yeah. You know, and so so uh, it's been distilled and refined, and bias has been inserted, yeah. and perspective has already been added, and yeah. you're not looking at ground truth anymore. Yeah. And so i i tend to I tend to appreciate um, uh, information that that uh, anybody presents. Yeah. And so you're you're allowed if you send out email, and it's called top five things, and just whatever happens to be your top five things, whatever you observed or whatever you did or yeah. whatever you learned or Things they're just things. Oh really? Yeah, top five things. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, just you uh, just went to a great restaurant. Yeah, I would who doesn't want to hear that? You know, <laughs> that's important information. Um, uh, and so, uh, I just had a baby. That's yeah. important information. Yeah. You know, so so whatever these things are, top five things. If you send it out, uh, if you send it out, I'll read it. Yeah. And so I read I read um, every single morning, probably you know a hundred or so. And I do it every day. And it's one giant thread that everyone in the company sends to, right? No, just everybody has their own version of top five things, and they just send it out. You know, if you send it, I'll read it. What's your top five things? Uh, it, uh, top five things are not meant to be um, from the center out. They're meant ah, to be from okay. the out. Yeah, there that you go. Sense. That's right. <laughs> yeah, think of it as IoT. Yeah. yeah. If I take my top five things and I sent it out, yeah. then I've contaminated the system. In fact. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reason why I don't do it. But I have my own top five things that I, I keep to myself. And how do you balance that with with planning? So sort of bottoms up ideas, having the mm. best uh, best engineers in your team decide what to work on, combined with you know sometimes you also have to execute on 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 a plan. How do you balance those two things? Uh, first of all, strategy is um, strategy is not words. Strategy is action. Yeah. And so if the company has a set of strategies, um, but the people's actions, their top five things are not that, then they're obviously not executing the strategy. And so the strategy, turns out, isn't what I say, it's yeah. what they do. Yeah. yeah. And so it's really important that I understand what everybody's doing. And you do that by just getting a feel for everybody's top five things. And you yeah. don't have to read all of them. You don't have to read them all every week. You don't, you just kind of, you know, is uh, sporadic and you know stochastically sampling the, the the system, and you have a feeling for whether the company is going in the direction that you you want it to go. Yeah, um, that we all agree we go. And so that's that's one. Um, second, planning. Uh, we don't we don't do a a, a um, periodic planning system, and yeah. the reason for that is because the world is a living, breathing thing. Yeah, and so we just plan continuously. Yeah, yeah. There's no five year plan. There's no one year plan. There's no plan. Um, uh, there's just what we're doing. That's 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 really uh, that's really exciting to to hear. I think one thing as you're executing on first principles and you come to some I ideas, it can also be hard to trust your intuition mm. if you're doing something that's you know contrary to what the the, the playbook is. Mm -hmm. What do you think made you trust your intuition on on some of these things? Mm -hmm. Well. Um, you know, most most everything that that um, uh, you dedicate the company to go after should be reasoned through first principles. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a foundation of what are the assumptions, the important assumptions that led to you believing that the computer has to change, or the chip architecture has to change, or yeah. the way that software is developed, or um, how how a data center has transformed. You know, a data center used to be a place where we store all of our files, and we would go retrieve it. Um, but every company in the future will have two data, or more data centers, but one of the data centers will, will not be a, a center for data, yeah. but it's a factory. Exactly. It's a factory for producing intelligence. Yeah. Um, and data comes in, yeah. it's refined through the computer, yeah. and what comes out is this invisible thing 
which is the most valuable thing in the world called intelligence. Yeah. And this this building is going to be, um, you know, driving this this thing continuously, exactly. right? And so yeah. you and I, we're all going to have factories. And and um, uh, how would you reason through that? And yeah. you kind of back your way out, you know. And I, before you know it, you formulate a view of the world based on first principle thinking, and and um, uh, and then the next part is you go after it um, uh, with enough dedication. Um, you know, with a uh, conviction, uh, so that you you could you could realize it. Oftentimes, it's really hard. Um, uh, but if you're wrong, you change your mind, yeah. and, and that's that's the thing that's really great about about um, uh, modern leadership. Uh, you know, if I'm if I'm wrong about something, I just say so. I'm just you know that was wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know that was goofy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you say, hey, I changed my mind. Yeah. And then and because you're you're adapting. Yeah. And literally replanning constantly. Yeah. It's interesting that over time, people might not even notice that you've adapted, you know, 17 times in, yeah. the, in the last year. Yeah. yeah, you've changed your mind maybe 35 times. Yeah. you know. Yeah, and so if, if you don't do these giant five-year plans, yeah, which I I think I think five-year plans are just horrible for technology. Yeah. First of all, yeah. it's just ridiculous. Yeah, um, and, and these continuous planning systems could could maybe just lead to easier leadership. Yeah. One one thing we were asked obsessed uh, about as the product we would build was the company we would build, and I think there's very few companies that are truly focused on empowering folks to do their life's work, mm -hmm. um, and that has also been you know a key passion of of, of yours. And mm -hmm. in how do you enable that? Mm -hmm. What are, what are some things that 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 you put into place to empower folks to to do their their life's work at mm -hmm. Nvidia? Mm -hmm. Um, that that is the mission of of leaders uh, to create the environment for others, yeah. right? To empower others to do to do their lives work. And now, um, there's a couple of ways you do that. Uh, the the most important way that 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 um, uh, of of uh, realizing that mission is to not um, cause people to do, have to do commodity work. Uh, so, for example. Uh, we never talk about market share in our company. Yeah. And the reason for that is because why are you talking about, I have 23% market share and they have 27% market share. Yeah. Why are you fighting people for market share? Yeah. Um, because the whole concept of market share yeah. says that there, there are a whole bunch of other people who are doing the same thing. Yeah. And if they're doing the same thing, why are we doing it? You know, why am I squandering the lives of these, these incredibly talented people yeah. to go do something that's already been done? And so, unless unless we just enjoy the competition, which which um, I, I tend not to, um, uh, so we tend not to go fight people for market share, fight people for for um, uh, markets that 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 are already commoditized. And so, so that's one way of thinking, um, to go do something that's never been been done before. Uh, the other way, the other way is to um, uh, demonstrate that is to walk away from uh, 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 businesses that that uh, has been commoditized. Yeah. And and either either through um, uh, uh, through our own initiative or otherwise, yeah. we've walked away from many businesses in the past, and so that that demonstrates very clearly to your employees that we're not going to go do commodity work. Um, and and so the combination of choosing the right work and walking away from the wrong work, that is the best way to create the conditions. And the rest of it is is what you and I were already talking about which is empowering people with information. Exactly. Um, yeah. uh, whereas some companies are very siloed and um, information don't travel outside of organizations, I encourage our company to be rather transparent. And if you ask me a question about, about uh, our company's secret, um, uh, there, aren't, there wouldn't be that many secrets. Yeah. You know? yeah. And so, so um, uh, I, that, that empowers people. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest of it is is how you conduct yourself during work. Yeah. Um, if there's a sense of hierarchy in the company, yeah. then obviously that that's not very empowering. Uh, but if uh, anybody can come into a meeting and contribute, in, including a new college grad, yeah. that's very empowering. And so, so I think empowerment is is a, a big deal.